Hello, I'm James Whistler, and in this video, I'm going to show you around the iSpeed Designer IDE or Integrated Development Environment. The iSpeed Designer Integrated Development Environment or IDE is quite a complex place to begin working if it's an entirely new product to you. There are numerous different areas in Windows display, very similar to Visual Studio. You can reposition any of those windows uh, as suits you best or as you feel most comfortable. But what we're looking at here is the main screen or setup that you would use by default with the product. So we're going to approach our tour around the product very much looking at it as, as though you newly installed designer um, and using all of the defaults that the product would give you. So let's have a very quick first look around the development environment. Along the very top line here, we have a pretty standard Windows application menu with a number of different options underneath. We'll talk through some of those in a moment. Immediately underneath that, we have an icon-driven menu of various different options which are clearly very specific to an individual project or the product that you're working with at the time. Underneath that top level header then, of both the very top level menu and the icon driven menu are the main uh, product or development windows that you would use. Each of them, which you can see, has a pin or a cross that would enable us to pop that section of the menu in or out of view uh, in order to reconfigure the way that the environment looks. So let's start over on the left hand side with the Application Explorer window. In the Application Explorer window, there are three tabs ranged vertically on the right-hand side, which hopefully you can see. The top one of which is Pages, though what lower down from there is Databases, and finally Documentation. The main one of those that you work with when you're working typically with a design would be the Pages tab, which is what we're looking at at the moment. And that is arranged intentionally, hierarchically, to reflect the sort of end-tier, uh, layered application design that you're working within. So if I go over onto the left hand side of pop the top node closed, you can see within there we've got four principal nodes in that tree view, on the top of which is the presentation layer or pages node. Within the sort of standard or simple work that you might be doing within designer, most of what you might do to begin with would be within that node. Below that we've got the business or business logic layer. Uh, so that's code relating to the business layer of your application. Underneath that, of course, we've got the data access layer, and then finally the base classes layer. Starting at the bottom briefly, if you pop the base classes node open, you will see all the different classes which are inherited throughout your own speed design of generated application. Um, and if you pop any of them open further, you'll be able to look at the individual code methods and classes that are contained within the base classes project. Something just to point out to you quickly there, you will see also at the top over here on the right hand side that all of these methods and classes that you can see within there are locked. That's because the base classes project is actually compiled outside of, of the designer application that you're working with. So that code is really there for your reference only and not such that you can change it from through the ISP Designer IDE. We'll close that and then move back to the data access layer. We will have code members within there for all of the tables which have been included within your generated application. Now these code members are different. You're entirely capable and free to go ahead and include customizations within that code. Similarly, in the business layer, we've got a similar folder for each of the classes relating to each SQL table that you've included in your application. I'm not going to deal with those in any more detail here because uh, one of the other videos will be covering them in more detail. Uh, just to point out to you that they are arranged hierarchically within the application explorer window. So I close that and pop open the presentation layer. This is where the bulk of your work within the IDE will be done. Again, you'll see that by, in general you have a folder for each of the included tables that you've included in your application. But at the same time, there are a numerous other ones, numerous other folders in there, such as the app themes folder which contains the CSS classes used by your application. But in addition to that, in each of the folders now, rather than classes relating to the data, we will click on any of these, you'll see that the rest of the ID updates, and what we're looking at there is an ASPX page rather than simply a code element. Now it's at this point that we can start to look at the other features within the ID and understand a little bit more about what the uh, 
design interface is giving us access to. In the middle of the page, we have the page layout section, or sometimes referred to as the quick layout editor. And again, if you're working at a fairly kind of basic level within the product, this is where the vast majority of the work that we would do to customize the layout and look and feel of your application would be done. The key part of working with the Quick Layout Editor is to understand that whilst what you're looking at is almost like an Excel spreadsheet with some two-dimensional representation of a component of the page, this drop-down at the top, the page section drop-down, gives the ability to step between the different layers or the, almost like the third-dimensional look at the different components of the page hierarchy. So, at the very top of that, you can see in the drop down there, we have the master page. That's the master page definition that our show customers table ASPX page will be utilizing. And that master page will contain uh, such features as the header and the menu, for example, and of course the footer of the page. If we go a, a layer down from there, we're then dealing with the show customers table ASPX page itself, rather than the master page components which will be shared across other pages. And then we can see that the, the sort of expanded tree view is popping out underneath the show customers table SPX page. I'll just highlight that there for you. But the only control that we have on the page is a single table control, the customers table, of course. Now, whilst I'm referring to that as a single control, you can of course see that it's actually comprised of several other components. A panel header, which contains a title region, and we've also got a section of, uh, called Customers Type of Region Inside. We've got the buttons uh, section of the page. Buttons inside, those are the buttons that are going to appear on a pop-up when we click one of the control buttons. And we've got a search area. We've also got filters. And then we've got the Customers Panel, within which is the Customers Field section. And that's where, what we're currently looking at within our Quick Layer Editor in the middle. I'll just click on, click on that for a moment and scroll left slightly. You can see within the Quick Layout Editor here, within our table, we have various rows of customer data that's going to be displayed. At this point, between rows two and six, we're looking at the various fields and their layout that's going to be presented to a user when that page is executed. Underneath the Quick Layout Editor, we have four separate tabs. The Formulas tab, the Cell Editor tab, the Data Sources tab, and the Code tab. Now again, I'm not going to go through each of these tabs in specific detail in this video because there are other videos detailing them all individually. What we're really here to suggest or point out to you at this point is the context-sensitive nature of the Quick Layout Editor. So at the moment, when I'm selecting cell C1, which is in the header of that table, uh, there's nothing within that cell. Um, and as a consequence, the formulas tab, for example, is not actually giving me any uh, ability to edit anything. There are no formulas related to any of the controls within that cell. As I click around the screen, if we go and select the company name field, for example, you'll now see that the formulas tab underneath springs into life. Um, and I can also click amongst the other cells, or the tabs while they're underneath there, and look at their control attributes and what they can enable me to customize within the page. So dealing with them quickly, each in turn, the Formulas tab enables me to control, using the formula language within the Pinescape Designer, how and what data is going to be presented within that cell and uh, where it might get saved to if we're dealing with an edit page. In this case, we're dealing with a show page, so there's no ability to save that data or anything. I'll move along to the Cell Editor. This is now giving us the ability to edit the look and feel of what's displayed within that cell. So at the bottom you can see that we have the gen tag for the company name. Um, and above it you can see that the CSS class that's being used on this cell is the table cell value class. This is the place where we would go to change that CSS value, to change the font sizes or colors which are being used, uh, to change the alignment of text, what have you. To the right of that again, we've got the Data Sources tab. So in this case, we're obviously looking at the company name field itself. Uh, this is enabling us to look at which of the queries on the page is sourcing that company name data from SQL, how we're getting hold of it, 
We can, of course, customize that query if we need to uh, interact with it using the data sources edit function underneath. And then lastly, the code tab. This gives us the ability to override the commonly overridden methods associated with which, whichever control we are highlighting in the quick layout editor above. Now let's move on over towards the right hand side now of the quick layout editor. We've got two very important windows on the right hand side there, the toolbox and the properties windows. Again, both of these are context sensitive. Depending on where we are within the quick layout editor selection in the middle of the page, the content that's being displayed to us on the right hand side in both the toolbox and the properties windows will change dynamically. Uh, to reflect effectively the, the tools or properties which might be relevant to us while we're using that aspect of the screen. So looking first at the toolbox, just go like that at the top there, there's an accordion control within the toolbox. Um, hopefully you can see at the top there we've got headers, footers and menus. We've got reports and forms, charts, fields, labels, sums and counts. And then down at the bottom there we've got filters buttons and ASPX and other controls. Now because we are within the customer's fields section of the page, we are interacting predominantly with fields uh, and, and labels coming from the customer's table. And as a consequence, by default, when we shift to that area of the page, hierarchical layer of the page if you like, um, the designer will automatically within the toolbox switch us to that part of the accordion control in the expectation that that might be where we'd like to work with, where we'd be grabbing controls from. Um, the toolbox is entirely drag and drop friendly. Uh, you can at any point grab hold of a field or a label in there and drag it and drop it onto the screen. You'll see as a result, having done that, that the tabs underneath automatically update to reflect what we've selected above. Of course, at this point, having dragged the contact title field onto the screen, two different things have happened. One, because designer knows that there already is a contact title within that screen, it's applied a one suffix to what we dropped on automatically uh, to ensure that we don't get any kind of confusion between those two values. But in addition, underneath in the code tab, you can see that it, the, the code tab is telling us that that function does not exist. I don't be worried by that in any way. It's simply saying that you will need to rebuild or regenerate your application in order to build the code to sit behind that control. And that's just a, a feature of designer trying to work, enable you to drag and drop and work more quickly within the quick layout editor without slowing you down by continuously having to regenerate code. And when I'm doing my drag and drop, we put that back. We've got the ability to drag and drop as a result all of the other controls which exist within that toolbox and just be dragged and dropped straight into the Quick Layout Editor. Do be slightly aware, uh, depending on where you are within that hierarchy of the page, uh, the toolbox won't necessarily prevent you from trying to grab hold of the control, but it may prevent you from trying to drop it onto the page if you're dropping it into a, a sort of uh, an irrelevant or incorrect area of the page, for example. Um, but any of the controls within that toolbox are available to you to drag and drop, including uh, data, be it record or table data, from other tables within your application. So you can see, for example, here, I could pop open the report section, and because designer knows that our customers have placed orders with us, if our company's doing quite well, um, we can immediately see that designer, having understood the relationship between customers and orders, we could grab an orders record or table control from here drag it and drop it straight into this area of the page and does the designer would automatically create all of the data binding between that customer row and the relevant order rows for us um, at, at design and build time. We don't need to do any of the hard wiring now ourselves. So it's a very powerful feature. Um, we could of course go and grab unrelated tables to any of the other tables within our application. It could also be dragged and dropped into here. No reason why you can't do that. But once again, designer is trying to make your life easier and do work for you. Uh, being aware through your schema of the fact that that relationship between customers and always exists, it will automatically present you with a list of related tables and they can be directly dragged and dropped straight into the page. Lastly, on the very right hand side of your IDE is the properties window. 
Again, the properties window is entirely context driven or context sensitive, based on the selection within the quick layout editor. In addition to that, you also have the ability to drop down uh, and within the area of the page that you're in, there's a drop down control at the top of the properties window which will enable you to do a kind of quick navigate around your page from there as well. All of the properties relating to any of the controls on your page are presented to you and are customizable here. In many cases, when you click into these areas to, to change one of those properties, in this case, in terms of the control type, Designer will give you uh, the ability to pop open another control panel with a button. In this case, I'm looking at potentially changing the control type that the company name is being displayed on the page with. Um, in this case, if it is only literal, you could change it to be a text box, etc. Something that's also worth pointing out here, um, we've got different sections within our properties dialog, some of which the headers are uh, encapsulated or um, surrounded by square brackets, and some are not. Anything that's surrounded by a square bracket indicates a property that designer is applying. Anything without the square brackets, such as appearance, behavior, and miscellaneous underneath, they are intrinsic .NET properties, which previously you would always have had to have gone through to Visual Studio to get access to those properties, uh, the, the sort of wider ASP.NET uh, area of properties, whereas now they are available to you directly through the designer IDE as well. So in case you're wondering when you look at what the distinction is between uh, the different property types within there and those square brackets, that's what they mean. So any, anything with the square brackets is an iron speed designer uh, implied property or a planned property designer. So that hopefully is a reasonably quick whistle stop tour around the iron speed designer IDE. Um, I hope that it's been of some use to you in at least getting to grips with what you're looking at when you're working with the tool. Um, there are, of course, many other videos which are then detailed more of the specific areas of the IDE uh, to help you further. Thank you. Bye.